Hello guys, Luna here. Welcome to this Elden Rings tips video. I just hit 250 hours of gameplay and level 200 and in this time I've been collecting tips and useful bits of info along the way that I wanted to share with new and beginner players to the game. Some are very basic, some are very obscure, but hopefully there is something for everyone. So let's jump in to number one. And warning, their video does contain some spoilers. One of the biggest reasons you will be killed in the game is panic rolling. If you time your rolls to exactly when the enemy attacks, you are far more likely to survive. If you prefer to block attacks, a shield with parry can work great. If you don't like scrolling through summons and usable items, especially during a boss fight, to reach your flasks, you can equip up to four items in your pouch to quickly use them. If you haven't discovered it yet, the location of maps are already marked on the map for you. Just look for these small obelisk looking items. On the map, you can mark sites of grace, useful for keeping track of caves, mines and catacombs you've already searched. Another very useful tip for caves and mines, if you go there and it won't let you fast travel because there is a red line through all of the grace points, it means you have not yet beat the main boss inside of it. If you want to move quicker through rot or lava, try jumping backwards. It goes quicker than just walking through it. You can also use a weapon with Quick Step Ash of War or Bloodhound Step as well. Always send your elevator back down after using, so if you die you don't need to wait for it to come back down. When using spells be careful of the weather, fire will do 10% less damage in the rain, while lightning spells would do 10% more. Get your horse torrent as soon as possible. When you enter Limgrave, run straight to the gatefront point of grace and you will receive it there. You should always spend runes if you can level up just in case you lose them. I once lost 300,000 climbing down the side of a cliff, respawning and then accidentally jumping backwards and falling off again. If you have runes that you lost in a boss fight and you want to get them back but can't defeat the boss, Run into the boss fight, collect your runes, and then you can quit the game. You will respawn back outside of the fog with your runes intact. Going to Roundhold Table, instead of moving your cursor all the way to the big circle, quickly hit Sight of Grace, Round Table Hold and Confirm, and it will take you there in less than one second. Don't want to spend time consuming your golden ruins, you can quickly sell them to the merchant for exact same amount as you would get for using them, saving you a lot of time. When talking to new NPCs, always exhaust all of their dialogue. Don't stop talking to them until they repeat the same lines over and over so you don't miss anything. Also, speak to every NPC you come across. Some NPCs will require you to reset the area by sitting at a site of grace before they give you new lines of dialogue. If you accidentally hit any NPC and they are now hostile towards you, you can absolve their sins at the Church of Vows to get them back to being friendly. Most NPCs in the game can be killed. If you do kill them, then any quest line they have will stop there and they can't be completed anymore. Sometimes it's easier to run away from an enemy attack than to dodge or parry, especially if you want to keep a distance from the enemy. Keep a shield with 100% damage negation on you, it's handy for super tough boss fights, especially ones where avoiding attacks is really tough. Jumping attacks and heavy attacks do disproportionate poise damage and are very useful for stance breaking bosses and enemies. Charged heavy attacks can stagger your enemies, allowing you to deal easy damage. Slower enemies can be easily backstabbed, so use a regular attack when behind them to do that. Ashes of War allow you to alter your weapons drastically, like making this Wakazashi with lightning damage. You can change the attribute scaling for most regular weapons. Currently this sword does lightning damage and it scales with strength and dexterity, so when I level up my strength or dexterity attribute, the weapon will gain a small increase in damage. However, if I equip the Sacred Affinity, it changes to doing holy damage. It will now also increase in damage if I level up my Faith attribute. Heavy attacks with some weapons or parrying against enemies on horseback can be a great way of dealing with them. You can respec your character after defeating Renala, but you can only do it with a larval tier, which are limited. When leveling up your character to begin with, you should put stats mainly into three things. 
vigor, stamina, and one other attacking stat. And for me, that's intelligence, as I'm a mage. The only other time you should put things into stats is if you need some more FP, you can increase your mind, or if a certain weapon or spell requires you to have a certain stat. Otherwise, stick to those three. Soft caps are levels at which the amount gained from leveling that stat will decrease. For example, Vigor has a soft cap at 40, at which point leveling Vigor past 40 will decrease the amount it gives you in health. Then the same thing happens at 60. So once you level up Vigor past 60, the amount of health gained from increasing that stat is pretty low, so it's no longer worth increasing that stat and you should move to something different. Keep in mind when equipping talismans, the final soft cap for intelligence is 80, and the Marika Source Steel Talisman adds 5 to your intelligence, so I only want to raise my intelligence to 75, so it brings it up to 80 in total. If you don't know what a stat does when leveling up, you can press help and then the explanation will tell you. When out exploring, two of the most useful talismans you can equip are the gold and silver scarabs. One gives you a 20% increase in ruins from enemies, which is a pretty huge increase, and the other increases your discovery by 40%. That's the stat that will increase item drops from enemies. You can climb ladders faster with the sprint button, or slide down them with the sprint button. Upgrading your weapon does far more damage than leveling stats. Early game then, leveling your weapon is the easiest way to increase the amount of damage you do, rather than focusing on raising your attributes. That way, you can focus most of your attributes in Vigor and Endurance if you're having trouble staying alive. One of the biggest mistakes players make is rolling away from attacks. Instead, roll into them. Rolling into them almost always puts you in a better position to avoid the follow-up attacks, and this clip against one of the game's hardest bosses will show you exactly the reason why you should always roll into the enemy instead of away from them. The best way to level up is to simply explore and kill things as you go. If you try to head through the story outright, you will find it near impossible, as you won't really complete the game until you're around level 140. But if you just go to every cave, catacomb, and ruin that you can find and kill everything as you go, you will find it not too difficult to level up, and you'll find you won't really have to farm any enemies for runes. These creepy statues point towards catacombs on the map. These red circles are undiscovered caves on the map. One of the easiest ways to get smithing stones and other upgrade materials is to find the bell bearing and give it to the twin husks. That way you can simply buy them from the store. Killing any NPC who sells you things will drop a bell bearing that can be given to the husks who will then sell you those same thing. If you wanted to, you could technically kill every vendor in the game and give the bell bearings to the twin husks, and that way you could buy pretty much anything from the game in one place. If you don't want to use a torch as one of your pieces of equipment, you can buy a lantern, which is a reusable item that doesn't take up any of your hand slots. Get yourself a useful spirit summon. Some are extremely good, and you can just sit back and relax while they do all the work for a change. Always be on the lookout for these trees that have golden seeds, and churches of Marika that have sacred tears, which allow you to add flask charges and increase the amount replenished from the flasks. One of the easiest ways to improve your survivability in the early game is to improve your flasks. Find the flask of wondrous physic and tears in order to make one charge flask that can do many different things, like full damage negation, no FP consumption for 10 seconds, increased stamina, and much more. Use rainbow stones to see if you will die jumping off an edge. If it breaks, you will die. If it doesn't, you'll survive. You can also use the rainbow stones to help you keep track of where you've been, inside of caves and other places. Every demigod enemy in game drops a great ruin. However, they need to be activated at one of the six divine towers, then equipped at a site of grace, and finally the effect only takes place after consuming a rune arc. You can sort your inventory on console, click the left stick, and it will come up a list of options in order to sort them. There's no best way to play the game, no class is far better than the other, it's whatever feels natural to you. One class will struggle with something another class will find easy, and it all balances out in the end. 
At some point you will need to farm runes to level up, however don't spend longer than you need to if you can kill the next boss on your list, that's all you will need, and leave the long farming runs until you reach areas near the end of the game where you can get a million runes or more in an hour. You can use the Mimic's Veil to sneak past the enemy. Pressing the attack button after blocking allows you to do a swift counterattack with your weapon in hand. Holding the up direction button will change your spell to the first slotted spell. Holding down will change your item to the first slotted item, and if you keep your first slotted item as, say, healing, then it's a quick way to get back to your healing in case of an emergency. Locking on works well as a method to discover enemies lying in wait. Glowing skulls are found lying around the game, breaking them on torrent or with your sword will give you free golden runes. An enemy with glowing yellow eyes will drop more runes, usually 4-5 to five times more than they normally do. The yellow markers on the map point you in a direction that you should be going. You can see from the point of grace it points in a direction that you need to go. Don't always listen to the NPCs and what they tell you. Some of them are out for themselves and can even ruin other quests. So make sure you talk to all NPCs, and if it seems like you shouldn't be doing something, then don't do it. When on your horse, you can swap to your second weapon. It's useful if you need a torch when you're on horse, for example. You need to press Y on Xbox and then LB, or triangle and L1 to bring it out. Summon torrent to avoid being hit, and these are called iframes. Essentially, these are frames of an animation in which you are invincible, and they're easiest to find when you summon torrent. Horse jumps let you reach some high places, but they also work in reverse and let you jump down from high places as well. Hold heavy attack on your horse to drag your weapon along the ground to hit multiple enemies as you go. Redirect your jumps and torrent to reach new areas. It's possible to avoid certain attacks using emotes. Enemy attacks are far more likely to bounce off a great shield, making them great for counter-attacking. White souls will fly out of an enemy that drops an item, making it quicker to farm items from enemies as you don't have to wait for them to finish dying before knowing if they're going to drop something. An enemy with glowing red eyes will be more aggressive and tougher to beat. If you get trapped in any grab attack by an enemy, quickly smashing the trigger buttons will release you from that attack early. When you enter poison or rot, your meter will increase, and then it will decrease when you leave it. However, if you roll in poison or rot, then your meter will continue to increase even after you've left it, so make sure you don't roll in poison or rot. The Merchant and Caled will sell Preserving Boluses, an item that removes and prevents rot buildup, also great for bosses that deal rot damage. Enemies after a certain amount of hits can break their stance, where they drop down allowing you to hit them. However, what is not shown is that most enemies have a stance break meter, which decays over time. So multiple quick heavy attacks are far more likely to break an enemy's stance, like this giant here, than to hit an enemy, wait, and then hit an enemy again. So if you're looking to break their stance, make sure you do it in quick succession. You can switch any one-handed weapon to become two-handed, dealing heavier damage. This is great against enemies that use shields to prevent your sword bouncing off of them. Combo attacks deal more damage, so try to get successive hits on an enemy. Every successive hit on this crab, for example, deals two extra damage. Don't have enough strength to wield a weapon? Well, if you two-hand a weapon, you can increase your strength, allowing you to equip a weapon you couldn't previously use. Thrusting swords can still be used when your shield is up. You can trick enemies into attacking each other.
You can use arrows and other throwables to distract enemies and sneak past or sneak attack them. You can make noise with your sword as well, allowing you to ambush tough enemies from behind. You can punch and kick and heal while on a ladder. Lightning attacks have splash damage while in water. Jump to avoid low sweeping and ground attacks. Also you can jump normally when your equipment load is heavy, so a great replacement for a regular dodge when you're over encumbered. Every weapon has a quick sneak attack. It comes in handy if you want to quickly hit an enemy before you attack. You can quickly crouch and regular attack to perform this. You can jump or roll to stagger some enemies. You can quick attack with your bow while rolling and jumping. You can set enemies on fire and even blow some up. Lower your shield to let your stamina recover faster. Two-handed shields are a good way to avoid taking damage against an enemy. Attacking near a ledge will let you know if you can survive jumping off of it. When sprinting, quickly tap crouch to recover a large portion of stamina. Double drink flasks for faster recovery. Equip a shield with no skill, or find the Ash of War no skill skill, and apply it to your favourite shield to remove its skill. This allows you to have a shield for blocking while being able to use your weapon skill. Skeletons need to be hit when they're down to be killed, but the cool thing is this also applies to skeletal summons. They will keep returning if they're not finished off. Switching to the shield while you're on your horse and pressing the heavy attack but not fully following through with it allows you to hold up your shield on horseback blocking forward facing damage. Some tough enemies only come out at night so be careful when travelling after sundown. Your horse won't take any damage while travelling through poison or rot. Be on the lookout for enemies carrying a chest, they drop decent golden runes. When choosing an armour, don't just look at stats, switch to the display to look for hidden properties like healing, damage buffs and more, especially on headpieces. One of the first thing you should do is help Roderica so you can get the ability to upgrade your Spitter Ashes. You can change your appearance at any time at Roundtable Hold. You can even switch between male and female and save characters to switch between them as you please. Everyone loves a free hug from Faya, but doing so gives you Baldekin's Blessing, and while it's in your inventory, it reduces your health by almost 100, so make sure to use it. 
So guys, there we have it, 100 tips, tricks, and secret game mechanics to help you get started on your journey in Elden Ring. There are some more tips I could have added, but I thought 100 was enough. But also let others know if you have any in the comments, and I'm sure there are plenty of specific tips for different builds as well, which I didn't go over. Like and subscribe for more Elden Ring videos, and I will see you next time. Bye.